The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phone. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh-huh. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. AudibleTrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Tuesday, 30th day of October, 2018. Hope you're having a great Tuesday. Whoever you are, wherever you are, thanks for joining us today. We're so glad to have you here. We are in our second decade of broadcast history. If you're new, grab your day planner, pencil us in for the next decade. All right. Now I've got a chart up of the S&P 500 E-mini futures. If you cannot see it, go to our homepage at cfrn.net. On the right hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions, 
you'll be registered in about 30 seconds and it'll actually be good all the way through tomorrow mm. first day of November we all got to register again first day of every month it takes 30 seconds and then you have one click access all month long you only register once per month but you have to register once per month you can also approach us from our dual stream over at YouTube that would be youtube.com slash CFRN slash live youtube.com slash CFRN slash live Okay. bookmark the page when you get there that will give you one click access every single day alright let's do that again hey good afternoon welcome back today is Tuesday 30th day of October 2018 to those listening to the podcast, you've already heard this. To those in the live audience, you're hearing it for the very first time. Thanks to my friend Wayne T. Thank you so much. <clears throat> All right. I said what I said. Welcome. Glad to have you. Old, new, lost. We're here. We're here for you, right? And you're here to find out what we have for you. So let's get rolling. Let's not draw this out. Let's adjust this microphone. That's the wrong button. Huh. Yeah, better button. I like that button better. Uh, this other button's going to take some getting used to. But we'll get used to it. All I'm doing is controlling what I hear back in my headset. Because that'll throw you. Oh, it'll throw you. All right. <clears throat> so I went through the spiel about how you go to the home page, cfrn.net, on the right-hand side. You click the big microphone, follow the instructions, get registered. Got to register once per month. The good news is you only have to register once per month. Okay? YouTube.com slash cfrn slash live. What does that do? Hmm? Bookmark the page when you get there. You'll always have one click access to the show no matter who you are or where you are and thanks again Wayne T at least we're all on the same page got a little bit of news take a look and we'll talk about the chart that's up we'll start here Starkware an Israeli based startup developing zero knowledge proof technology to improve the scalability and privacy of blockchains has revealed that it recently closed a $30 million equity funding round. Paradigm led the round, which included new investments from Intel, Sequoia, all the big names, Coinbase, Multicoin, Collaborative, Scalar, Semantic, Previous, uh, Patera, Floodgate. Everybody's getting a little piece of Starkware. What's the big deal? The investment underscores the emergence of a crypto development hub. Earlier this month, we talked about the Israeli Blockchain Association, which covers more than 200 young companies operating in the larger crypto industry. In addition to Starkware, whose co-founders include Professor Eli Ben Sassoon of the Technion Israeli Institute of Technology, and a couple of assistants, <clears throat> they now have under their umbrella inside their incubator 37 startups developing protocols or infrastructure in the country with 23 operating in the security sector and all this little incubator needs is for one of those 37 to become the intel of crypto and there you have it while the mainstream media continues to spread the misconception that crypto is bad for the environment, in the real world, creative visionaries are using them to help with conservation efforts. S.C. Johnson, the U.S. multinational behind household products such as Raid, Windex, Mr. Muscle, and Toilet Duck, have unveiled a plan to fight pollution with cryptocurrency. Mm. In collaboration with Plastic Bank, the Wisconsin-based company, 
They're planning to open eight recycling centers in Indonesia where people will be able to exchange plastic waste for digital tokens. The first facility opened in Bali on October 28th with all of the centers to be operational by May of next year. Each of the eight recycling centers will be able to process a minimum of 100 metric tons of plastic per year. Now, this program will help create more opportunities for people living in poverty and will offer waste collectors an important sense of pride. It will also benefit a wide range of socioeconomic demographics, including local residents living below the poverty level. CEO of SC Johnson, Fisk Johnson, says we want to help recover plastic equal to the amount we put into the world through innovative recycling and recovery programs. Good. That's good. That's real good. Check bank. You may not bank there, but you might want to. Expo Bank CZ claims it is the first bank in Europe to offer account holders the opportunity to perform crypto related transactions right alongside the traditional banking activities. See, banks saw this coming. We either embrace it or they're going to kick us to the curb. And we is, is we. We the people who put money in the banks. They've taken advantage of us far too long. The new service called NEO, which is going to be a little bit confusing because the Chinese equivalent of Ethereum is called, no, it's not NEO, but it's close. It's based on the bank's online platform, Expo Banking. It gives users full control over their financial activities, including those related to cryptocurrencies. How does this become mainstream in Czechoslovakia before anywhere else? Expo Bank has recently entered into partnerships with two companies from the crypto sector in order to provide crypto related services. An agreement with WBTCB allows the bank's customers to invest and transact in BTC. According to a press release referenced by Czech Media, the bank's customers will not need to create a separate cryptocurrency wallet. Higher transaction limits will be available to verified account holders. Expo Bank's clients will have access to new investment opportunities in the growing crypto industry. They will be granted access to Fundlift, the largest crowdfunding platform in the Czech Republic and also one of the bank's partners. Investors will be able to support fintech startups by participating in initial coin offerings as well as purchase shares of established companies. Right from your browser online banking on steroids. The Czech Republic is also one of the most crypto friendly destinations in Europe all around. The bank is just meeting the need. Its capital city recently topped the list of the best cities to spend digital coins. This was a study carried out by Fortune Jack, which covers Bitcoin hotspots around the world. Prague is home to over 150 venues that accept cryptocurrency payments, including many tourist attractions, stores, hotels, and restaurants. Last year, the largest online retailer in the country, Alza.cz, the largest online retailer in the country. Now accepting BC, BTC, this past spring, one of the largest Czech utility companies, which we reported to you, opened a cryptocurrency payment gateway for its customers so that they could pay for their electricity, water, sanitation services. Now with the launch of the NEO service, Expo Bank expects to attract even more crypto enthusiasts, potential investors, and businesses operating in the industry. This is all about strategic alliances, eventually expanding their customer base, which currently is around 20,000 clients. Not a huge bank, but it's a start. 
restricted access to regular banking services remains a major hurdle for companies operating in the fintech sector, even in crypto-friendly jurisdictions such as Switzerland. This is an ongoing debate in the Alpine nation on how to solve the issue in order to prevent an exodus of fintech startups. Hmm. Word for the day, two words, strategic alliance. All right, let's go to the numbers and see. Oh, what's tomorrow? Hmm? Boo. <laughs> yep, I said boo. There are a few ways to add a crypto gift alongside the candy you give away to trick-or-treaters, such as preloaded plastic gift cards, or even physical bitcoins with embedded QR codes. However, the quickest and easiest method is just to print out a paper wallet and load it with as much money as you want. There are many options online that allow you to print out paper wallets, but one great place to get a Bitcoin Cash BCH wallet is of course at paperwallet.bitcoin.com. The graphics team at Bitcoin.com recently created new designs and you can also create a custom design to fit the holiday spirit. One possible problem with giving away paper wallets as gifts is that not everyone will actually use them and thus the funds could be lost. For this reason, there are a few specialized tools out there for giving crypto tips. A crypto tip is a printable cryptocurrency tip that you can give away to anyone. And if the recipient loses the paper tip, it's not a problem because you can set an expiration date. So the funds are returned to a specified wallet if the tip isn't claimed in time. Mm, this is good, crypto tip. You can also create as many tips as you want in minutes. Just put in a BCH refund address for unclaimed funds and an email address to receive notifications about the activation and expiration of tips. Select the quantity of cards you want to print and the amount each one will hold, possibly as a tip for the crypto service itself to show support, and then just add a message. Click checkout, transfer the sum by scanning a QR code and you're done. Mm. Can you Im can you imagine these little costumed faces showing up at your door? Uh, we turn the lights out and hide in the back of the house, but that's just us. We're different. We're special. Um, a little costume face, want some Tootsie Rolls or Gummy Bears or whatever's popular. <laughs> you hand them cryptocurrency. Here, kid, hang on to this. It might pay for your college someday. Ah, uh, hey, mister, we're going to egg your house. Yeah, won't be the first time. All uh, right, numbers. Numbers from around the world. Cash markets. We'll talk futures in a moment. Currently here in the U.S., cash markets. Dow Jones up 189 points. The NASDAQ up 66. S&P 500 up 20 and the Russell 2000 up 24. Now that's a gain of one and a half percent for the Russell, almost 1% for the NASDAQ. In the commodity basket today, crude oil is down 38 cents, trading 6666 last. Gold down $1.40, trading 1226.20 last. In the Asian markets, the Nikkei finished the session up over 300 points, one and a half percent. Shanghai rose 26 points, over one percent. And the Hang Seng uh, down 226. Ah, that's pocket change for the Hang Seng. And last but not least, in the European markets, the FTSE gained 27 points by the close. The DAX finished the day down 31 points. And the CAC was pretty quiet, losing just seven points on the session. Mixed in Asia, mixed in the United Kingdom, and green, it's a big green radio day here in the U.S. of A. As we head into the close, we'll see if that changes. 
I wrote last night about this spike on the screen. As the markets were starting to come off last night, I said, okay, we're, we're going to accept the fact that this can go either way, either way, and it can still go either way. This is also known as an inside day. We've not taken out yesterday's low or yesterday's high. A, diet, a day of sideways violent consolidation. Hmm. So we can't ignore that. The market is going to try to resolve it to the upside if it can't. Oh, is it going to pounce to the downside? Well, we're going to find out. How do you find out? All you got to do is wait. It's like an exit signal. All you got to do is wait. Hmm. Once we, if we, Take this trend line out. Do a trader vic, kiss it on the back side. We'll be issuing an alert to get short. If it happens during today's radio broadcast, I will put it on the screen. Okay? All right. With that, we're gonna go to Michael, get a recap of everything that happened in the live training room today that we'll be back to take a look at some concierge trade alerts yesterday we recap logic 247 today we'll do concierge trade alerts tomorrow logic 247 we're going to trade off back and forth one each day doing both the same day is a, just a little confusing but everything gets recapped on l2 in the channel and the ctas i've created a channel and those are going to be recapped there as well be it with charts or with video so make sure you have access make sure you've joined the channel if you aren't familiar with telegram if you're like oh I'm not a tech person okay that's why they made telegram so simple to use so that no one has to be concerned about their technical know-how in order to put it to use it's an incredible tool and I look forward to showing you how to use it Take it away, Michael. All right. I, uh, we had another good day today. Awesome. Hey, did you get a chance uh, to... Did you respond to any of those messages that I sent you yesterday? Uh, probably. <laughs> no. No, no. No, they were sent in the uh, Telegram. Send? Oh, there's a bunch. I want yeah. Telegram. Yeah. Yeah, once you're done. Yeah, yeah go ahead no, and take care of what you got to do, and then you can look at them later. Okay. I'll hit mute, and I'll be here when you're done. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Tuesday, the 30th day of October, 2018. Um, now, we started out, I'm just checking to make sure that everything's working well. Okay, it is. Um, here we go. Let's start out with this. If you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the home page here at cfrn.net. And right over here on the right-hand side, it says five-day free trial, apply to CFRN.net. Click on that. I mean, there are other places you can click to, you know, big green ones like down here, free five-day trial, uh, use our propriety indicators for free. You can click on any of those, and it is eventually going to bring you to this page, where all we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. Hit the submit button. Once you hit that submit button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay, we don't know we don't know that you took the trial until you click that link. Okay, so it is imperative that you click that link. Um, all right, the spreadsheet. Almost at the end of the month, guys, and this is definitely going to be our best month of the year. Um, and you know, today is our probably second best day of the year after yesterday. <laughs> but Anyway, if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you're going to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today is the 30th day of October 2018. Uh, today we lost eight ticks. We lost eight ticks on the crude. But we made 57 ticks on the ES. That put us at plus $632.50. Today it took 22 minutes and two trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point we were up $112.50. And we took a total of 12 trades. 
So on the month now, we're at $5,973. That's over 22 days, averaging $271 per day. On the year now, we're at $31,373. That's over 201 business days, averaging $156 per day. Now, <clears throat> there were a few other days that I could not be in here. And, you know, there were more money to be made. But anyway, think about this in, you know, like times five. Just for instance, if you get up to five contracts, times five, for instance. That's two hours per day, times five. And and there are tax advantages to it. <clears throat> anyway, I am not an accountant. Nowhere near it. Though so I'm engaged to one. <laughs> Um, anyway, we'll go through everything now. Okay. Um, no sound. Wayne's got no sound. Wayne. Let me tell Wayne. Wayne. You guys all hear me, right? Oops. You guys do hear me, right? Okay. All right. I was just sending you a message, Wayne. There you go. <laughs> Good. Okay. So on gold today, we did absolutely nothing. Same as yesterday. There were no trade setups on gold. Look at this mess right here. There were no trade setups on gold. Not even during the break. Nothing. I don't know what's going on with gold. We're in the Z contract on gold. And we're not even in November yet, so there should have been something, but there wasn't. Um, DT Pro, uh, not DT Pro, I'm sorry, Euro. It was really, really choppy. It finally started to trend a little bit, gave us one trade setup, we took a break even on, and that was it. Um, during the break, there was nothing, nothing, I, you know. I don't know, these, these markets lately, they're feast or famine. And our feast lately has been the ES, which is uh, totally unusual. But the feast has been the ES. And uh, like I'm going through here on crude right now. Yeah. Our first trade on crude was right here. And we stopped out. And then we missed a long trade right here that would have been good and a secondary long trade right here. But I'm pretty sure it was going into the high of the day at that point um, on the secondary long trade right here. But I don't know. Um, either way, we missed it and we didn't get anything there. We did jump into this one and we got a break even on it. Okay. Uh, we missed this one. And that ended up going up and doing what it should have done. And let's see during the break. Well, it was too choppy in here to do anything. But over here, yeah, uh, it's all wrong down here in the slingshot. So that was it. We ended up with minus eight ticks on the crude. Now, the ES was our big player today. Okay, back it out a little bit because there's a lot to talk about, I think, on this one. And I'm um, scrolling backward, and it's working today. And I didn't have any trades that I forgot about today like I did yesterday. You know, to get to that big number yesterday, to get to 52 ticks yesterday, I forgot about one trade that was 28 ticks. But today, I paid attention and did every one, and I ended up with 57 ticks. Well, I didn't do every one. I missed some. I missed that one, which would have been a win trade, that one, that one, and that one. All winning trades. Um, but I grabbed this one for one tick, and this one for eight more. Right up into the zone. Um, this one for two more to give me plus 11. Um, let's see, then it got choppy and we left it alone. And then we got over here and we picked up eight more ticks there to put us at plus 21. And then after the 21, we picked up another eight ticks to put us at plus 29. Then, oh no, 
And somewhere in there, we picked up four ticks to put us at plus. Oh no, it wasn't. I'm sorry. We picked up 14 ticks right here to put us at plus 43. Okay. I was afraid I didn't mark something, but I did. And then in here, we had a break even. And right there, we picked up a couple more ticks to put us at plus 45. And here, four more to put us at plus 49. And then right there, we picked up eight more to put us at plus 57. 57 ticks on the morning. And during the break, let's see. Yeah, there was a long trade right here. That It looks like it on the up close right there. Oh, it's highlighted. So that wasn't even during the break. On the up close right there, um, stop should have gone to break even. Okay, then it pulled back and it went and did what it should have done. Um, and it was really choppy. And in here, there was a shorting opportunity right here. And I'm looking down here at the slingshot. Okay, that's that's what I'm looking at. The slingshot, then look at the price. There was a shorting opportunity there, another one there. And then we're getting too close to the zone to go short. Then it changed directions right in here. I wouldn't have done anything right here because uh, we needed to establish a trend first. Okay. And then when it pulled back here, I wouldn't have done anything here because the cycle is going down too steep. And then it turned around and started going into the zone again. And it's kind of been hugging the zone ever since. So there really wasn't a lot during the break. Really not. But that was it. That was our morning. So again, I will go through this. Uh, today is the 30th day of October 2018. If you're going to read the spreadsheet, you got to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today we lost eight ticks in crude and we made 57 ticks on the ES. Put us at 632.50. Um, today it took 22 minutes and two trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point we were plus $112.50. And we took a total of 12 opportunities today. On the month now, we're at $5,973. That's over 22 days, averaging $271 a day. On the year, we're at $31,373. That's over 201 days, averaging $156 per day. That is on the year. So that is one contract, two hours per day. Now, if you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the homepage at CFRN.net. And right over here in the right-hand column, it says five-day free trial, apply it at cfrn.net. Click on that. Okay, when you click on that, you will be sent to this page where all we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. Hit the submit button. And when you hit that submit button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click the confirmation link, well, you don't get a free trial. Okay because we don't know that you clicked on the confirmation link until you do that. All right. All right. So that is going to wrap it up for my part of this session. With that, we can pass it out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. It is now 1239 and John is not in yet. And uh, maybe Dwayne's not either. <laughs> I don't know. But look at that. It went right back through that zone. So what I was saying to everyone this morning was if you have our indicator set, you could just trade the ES right now. You don't need any of the other markets. If you just trade the ES, there is plenty of opportunity in it right now. Between today and yesterday, plenty of opportunity. Okay. Questions? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Dwayne, if you're talking, your mic is not on. If you're not talking, well then, that makes sense. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, and let's see, on the gold right now. I'll pull a trend line like that. There we go. And um nothing over here on the ES because it's stuffed inside that weekly trading zone. Nothing on crude and nothing on gold because it's not trending. I'm, I'm sorry, not gold, but the euro because it's not trending. Did you already call? Oh, yeah. All right, uh, Brad, I trailed the stop behind the MA1 or the black step line, whichever is closest to price, until, here, let's look at one that we did here on the ES. Until price gets, I mean, until the green line gets up into the cycle. Now, let me scroll back and I'll show you. Right here, we shorted here and we trailed our stop behind the black step line and behind the MA1 and behind the black step line until this green line got down into the, into the cycle. Okay, because once it gets into the cycle, it's time for it to pull back and try to do it all over again. So when it got down there, I trailed it right behind price. Okay, and then it took me out. I think that was a plus eight. That is the trailing stop strategy. Okay. Yes, that is. That's what I do all the time. And, you know, the stuff that we do, we've been doing for years. Years. See, I just highlighted that one for you. And look what it did green line got down into the cycle it's time for it to pull back now and try to do it all over again so the stuff that we've been doing we've been doing for years it is proven okay you're going to grab your screens yeah go ahead um uh, you can do that, Brad, if you want to. However, you, you know, whatever your risk management risk management strategy is, is up to you. You know, we give you a path that you can go down and use. And if you want to stray from that path, that's up to you. Of course, you know, the results are also well. No matter what, the results are also uh, you know the up result you. of what you've done. <laughs> <clears throat> it's the most difficult part I think of trading is when people realize that they not and I'm not speaking to you personally but I'm just speaking at large uh, that, that no matter what methodology no matter what system no matter what indicator oscillator at the end of the day you still have to make decisions and yes there are things out there that will make decisions for you the quote-unquote automated black box trading strategies when's the last time you saw one of those on a tv commercial oh they're keeping it secret only a few select people not not millions of people around the world who would gladly lay down tens of thousands of dollars each making that person instantly the wealthiest person ever to walk planet earth far wealthier than Jeff Bezos who's who's hemorrhaging pretty bad right now um, <clears throat> stock down 24% over the last month I don't know or how many billions did he lose well that's for him to be concerned with not me I wish him all the very best if there was that thing somebody would be selling it and not behind closed doors and in dark alleys where they're sold now but in the bright spotlight of cnbc all day long chipping out them little software packages it just artificial intelligence machine learning may someday evolve to that point you can just walk in and ask your bot how much hey bot how much uh coin did we make today the bot shrugs his shoulders and goes, hangs his head. I had a rough day. In that digital voice. <clears throat> so that day may come, but it's not here yet. And so for now, 
we got to learn to make decisions. Just like Brad made a decision right there. He said, you know what? It might be simpler to do the forte. Whatever that meant. It was him weighing what Michael had just shown him and what Michael had explained and how we've done things and what our rules are. And then Brad going, hmm. For me, Brad, he's saying, for me, I think it might be simpler just to use the, the forte. Whatever that meant in the context of the conversation, as soon as I spotted it, it, it had a little glow about it. You know, like those little stars that go want want. And uh, I can tell, thought went into that. Thanks for sharing, Brad. All right, guys, if you had a real working black box, would you share it with anyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it depends. To what degree does it work? See, there again, we okay, we got to conquer and divide here. So that, does it earn you 10% a day on your money? Because that could take you a long time to get somewhere unless you already have a lot of money. If you have a lot of money and it makes you 10% a day, faithfully, I mean, if that were possible, if it could happen, nothing has ever been able to generate a 10% return daily other than, oh wait, S&P, Dow, Russell, NASDAQ crew, gold, they do it every day. But they're not in a black box, they're just sitting out there for everybody to look at. Some days they make it available on the long side, some days on the short side, but the market just grinds it out every day. And all we have to do is be in place to participate in the outcome. Brad answered his own question. My thoughts would be no to the black box because it might not work anymore if too many people used it. Hmm. Okay. I don't want to make you sorry you 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 made the comment, but I let's walk through that. Let's walk through that. If too many people are using it, it might not work anymore. Um, I'm not uh, <laughs> play along, okay? How does that work? If if we want to be long the anything and too many people know that we want to be long the anything all that does is chase price higher and what did we say we wanted to be long it's kind of like this a little bit Blue and climbing, blue and climbing above the 50, below the 50, red and falling. Now this like, well, that's not a lot. Oh, it's a lot. From here to here is 60 S&P points at $50 a point. That's $3,000 right there. And all you had to do was recognize the importance of the bearish cross this thing is red and falling takes a dive below the 50 yard line this is what the market made available leg retrace leg retrace leg retrace oh no more leg it just kept retracing okay and then it went flat when are you gonna put an alert out? <laughs> when it's time. Oh, there's one. And here we sit. Tied in a knot. There is no question in our mind that the best position we could possibly have at the moment is none. Because we're not blue and climbing and we're not red and falling. And if we're not blue and climbing and we're not red and falling, we need to stay out of the market. Other than that, it's like Jack Swaggart wrote in his book, uh, The New Market Wizards. The only time he puts on a trade 
is when he sees money lying in the corner. There's money. It's just lying in the corner waiting to be picked up. Then he'll get out of his chair and go over and he'll pick it up. Otherwise, he just sits and watches. Yeah, that's his story. He put it in a book. So I'm sure he's going to probably stick to it. And if you haven't read the book, neither have I. But I did read a preview using Scribed, the app. S-C-R-I-B-D. If you don't have that app, it's a pretty cool app. You can read a preview of pretty much any book in the world. If you're thinking of buying a book, like, man, I mean, that book's 50 bucks. I don't know if I want to buy it. Go to Scribe. Get a preview. Check it out. Read a couple chapters. And you might like it. What was a, a recap of the recap, Michael? Uh, today, it took 22 minutes and two trades to get to $112.50. Twenty-two minutes and two trades. Twenty-two. That's like a code. Twenty-two times two. Uh, one hundred twelve fifty per contract. All right, guys, stand back. And there we go. Nice job. Hey, and John you. is out there. What All time right. is it? We'll yeah. communicate with him. Uh, we're Let's running a little something. late. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and open him up if you're ready. Okay. Go ahead. John, John. welcome to the show. You may have to jingle his phone. Man. Okay. All right. He's got his mic open, so we'll wait for him to show up. All right. On the S&P, we're going to go through the concierge trade alerts, guys. I did the Logic 247 yesterday. I'm going to do the concierge today. Then we'll go back to the Logic tomorrow. I promised you yesterday I'm not going to do this thing where I just cherry pick whichever, you know, has the best results for the day. We're just we're gonna stay on track. Yesterday L two, today CTA. Whatever that means, whatever it holds, whatever is there, you know, it is what it is. That's the truth about trading. Now, considering that we had these sideways markets last night, I don't expect too much. In fact, not only do we have an inside day, some would argue that we've got a megaphone pattern which i've heard it said is the most dangerous pattern in the world have you heard that michael well i've heard when it breaks out of the megaphone then it's time to start looking for smaller patterns yeah typically what i find is when it breaks out it jumps right back in because of the nature of the expanding dealy bob whether it breaks out to the top or the bottom it keeps as it goes leg retrace leg retrace it pops back in and it's it, it really can become uh, uh, the death of a thousand stopouts you know trying yeah. to trade that choppy sideways see I, I I know I know for a fact that when I first started trading e many futures and first went down the road of technical analysis <clears throat> That this market in front of me today, I would have just, well, I'd have been, I'd have been all over that thing, trying to duck and weave and bob, and and it's tight in a knot. It's like he's lacing his shoes to get ready to go running or something. I don't know, but it's not anything. I, now, Michael, they, they did good in the live training room. Did you say today the S and P was the most active for you? Oh yeah, I made fifty-seven ticks. Now here's 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 why that fifty-two yesterday. Yeah, yeah, so right here, my horizontal line on the cursor is at twenty-six sixty-four, and then I drop it down to here, twenty-six forty-four. So from sixty-four to forty-four, just over a couple of hours, that's twenty points. On a really good day in under normal market conditions, wherever that is, and if that ever comes back, if it ever becomes a thing again, and I'm pretty sure it probably will because price and life always revert to the mean if I keep coining new phrases <clears throat> I'm gonna jingle when I walk okay any questions on that anybody got any questions be happy to answer them it feel doesn't them. look like there's any questions there no I'm asking if, if, if anybody has one Go ahead and put it in the chat box so we can address it as we walk through the charts. And we'll see what we find. 
whatever that may be. So I'm not so concerned with the megaphone at this point as I am. If we can take this trend line out here uh, and get rid of the megaphone, because I'm not really a pattern recognition guy, and so maybe that's a good megaphone, maybe it's a bad megaphone, I don't know. I just want price to come down into an area below a weekly zone, and we've got a zone at the low, and we got a zone up at the uh, high. This is last week's weekly trading zone. On Thursday, I'll put all the zones on the chart for the entire community. Partners, of course, had them yesterday except one. All partners had them yesterday except one at 6.15 a.m. Eastern. All right. Concierge. Now they went out, oh that's right, they went out this morning because last night the opportunity simply wasn't there. So we'll see if anything's transpired uh, since this morning. It was right before the market opened, about 9 a.m. Eastern, I think. Mm, yep, 9.01 a.m. is what it says. And the first thing for your consideration is to consider being long at 26.70. That went out at 9 a.m. That would be right here. 26.70 would be right here. And the swing high would be 75 and a quarter. So that was good for five and a quarter S&P points is what the market made available. We never get out of the swing high or swing low. Don't try to kid you on that. Uh, simply because you don't know it's the swing high or the swing low until after the fact. So how could you have known to get out there? Now sometimes we get out there by accident or maybe we have a hard target there. We get out. It was a hard target for a reason and maybe that reason you know shows up in the in the trade itself because the market turns on a dime right there at that hard target and goes the other way, important prices, important areas. So when that happens, we accept it. We don't fool ourselves into thinking we're that terribly clever that we can call the highs and lows of the market. Trying to buy the low and sell the high is a way to get your head handed to you. So Michael and I, everything we've built, everything we've done, everything we've labored over uh, all these years has been something that once a move is underway, you come in, you scoop a little bit out of the middle. You don't worry a pretty head over buying the low or selling the high. Just wait until the indicators show you that there's a move underway. And when it moves underway, we know what happens. Leg, retrace, leg, retrace, until it can't put in another leg. So it turns around and goes the other way. Leg, retrace, leg, retrace, until it can't put in another leg. And then it turns around and goes back to the original direction, whatever that was whatever the greater trend is. So, um, there's five and a quarter. Price gets back below the trigger and it hands out another three and three quarters. Now, we also said to consider selling 2640. There's 830. There's 9 o'clock. Here's what it looks like when you try to sell 2640 because you think the market might be getting away from you. Twenty-six forty. Nine o'clock. Swing low. We got a swing low at 33. We'll call it 34. The math's easier. So that's six points. That does it for the S&P. Market made six points available. Made five and a quarter points available. Made three and three quarter points available. Buying 26.70. there 
and selling 2640 right there okay let's go to their question okay all right go to the down same thing tighten a knot you want to be in it not really now what happens is when you if we took the same sideways soup and we put it to a four tick range chart which I will do we'll just clear this one off Just a moment. Okay. Go for tick range. Now, opportunities that we could not see on the larger time frame in the bigger picture and you can't see it in the bigger picture well let's take a look now what you're looking at right now only goes back to what, 11 a.m. this morning where are you at right now at 102 yeah that's right so that's current time so let's just have a look go insert indicators CFRM. Okay. All we got to do is get inside one of these moves. We'll, we'll pick up here at 1130-ish. There we go. Let blue and climbing, blue and climbing, even on the four tick range. Just bullish cross. Okay. Let's look to get long. Leg. As you see Michael do every morning, just draw that trend line. Ruin climbing. Ruin climbing. Get long. If you get long, as we make a close above that trend line, Put you in the market at 066.20. Oh, we're on crude right now. Put it to the down in a minute. That's 66.20. Up to 66.40. It's $200 per contract if you got out at the exact swing high. And then what does it do? Leg. Price reverts to the mean. Leg. Retrace. Leg. Retrace. Get pinched down. Is it going to do a bearish cross? Is it? Is it? Not yet. Still got more life in it takes us all the way up to 66.80 now bullish cross 66.07 to the first bearish cross 66.64 we'll call it 50 cents we'll call it $500 per contract available We get a bearish cross. The market's gonna make one more attempt. How do we know when this is really done? Price always reverts to the mean whether you're on a four tick range, a 30 minute chart, a daily chart, bullish cross, blue and climbing, blue and climbing, leg retrace, leg retrace, leg. 
as a daily chart. This leg took it from 69.30, call it 69, call it 70 to 75. Just right here, 70 to 75. That's five thousand dollars per contract. And what did you have to know? You had to know when it's blue and climbing here and here you had to find the right spot to get long and that's what we teach you now how do you know when to get out the market hands you an exit signal clear as day step line crosses red candlestick on a long trade that's the market saying uh, please depart the platform at $74.18. Wow, what a nice trade. It's over four grand. Waiting for the exit signal. So, now let's do ES. Let's pretty hit that. Here's daily. <clears throat> daily. John, if you're there, your mic's open. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Hi, how great. Are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the invite. Um, it's, it's a pretty tricky day today. We 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 started out. I had a feeling we were going to have a a good start because you know the markets did okay last night, um, and uh, the the you know the. So I, I, just like I said yesterday, you, you, you know, you kind of feel like a dunce um, when you follow a, a sell-off like we had yesterday, which was pretty nerve-wracking. Remember, we, remember, we were up in the morning; we we're up at 300 plus on the Dow. Started going down during your watch here, and uh, had a you know accelerating sell-off, similar to before. But the the one thing that's been kind of uh, Noteworthy, if you like, is we've had increasingly positive divergent buy signals. In other words, the sell-offs that we've been getting uh, recently have been uh, on high, on better breadth. And yesterday, I don't think I don't think we even went negative on the breadth. Um, and right now, we're actually quite positive on the breadth. We're positive 700. Uh, we've been up to about 11 or 1200 today, but. You know what that tells me is the market internals are getting better. In other words, the body of the market stocks are actually, um, you know, turning around and, and and reversing. And so, as we went down and made this extreme low yesterday afternoon, you know, I have a few tricks up my sleeve, and I had a I had a feeling we were going to rally in the last 20 minutes or so. It turned out to be about the last 15. We really went up on, you know. Uh, with the last 15 minutes and had about the fastest, you know, I actually put a buy stop in right on the low of yesterday on the NASDAQ and the S&P. We were down around, um, oh, I know what got me going. I, I, <laughs> I saw the 666, yeah, 6666, you know, and that was the bottom in the, in the, on the S, on the Dow and the S&P in uh, 2009, I thought, you know what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's got a, that's, it's worth a shot. So that's what we did. And honest to God, we had uh, the fastest 100 point rally in in the history of the NASDAQ, I think yesterday afternoon, off that, off that, uh, off that low. And, um, oh, sorry, that was in, the, what am I saying? Yeah, no, it was, it was s and I think it was something went to six 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 yesterday. I forget what it was, but I'm misreading the NASA. The, the NASA went to six 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 this morning. Sorry, that we took a shot of it this morning on that. Yesterday we were at six five eight zero, oh. so we were in that general range. I can't remember the six five eight five. Maybe that was a number we put in. But the next, well, in the next nine minutes, we went from. We went actually up about 130 points in nine minutes yesterday on the NASDAQ. That's never happened before. So that is, you know, that's a, that's a, uh, 
uh, you know, a pretty big deal. We actually said stay long going into the night, and we did go quite a bit higher during the night. We got up to 6,800, just 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 shy of 6,800. Before, and I said, look, there's almost guaranteed going to be a retest of this, so be ready for it. And we kind of went down to the 6,666 six, six, six bottom this morning, and then ran up, you know, quite a, another fairly decent amount of points. Uh, more than 100, I think, again. Uh, and how now we're down again, uh, negative on the NASDAQ, which is really disappointing. Um, and unfortunately, it's starting to look like we might test this bottom of yesterday, unless we hold around 6,700, uh, or uh, hold it around maybe 60, 2640 or so on the S&P, somewhere like that. Um, we noticed this morning that the... Uh, Oil was down sharply at 65 and a half or so. Took a shot at that. I know you were just talking about it. And we, we took a point, we sold it around about 60, 66 and three quarters, I think. And the products also had a, bit, a very big rally, but they're coming back down again now. And the VIXs are going up. Now, the VIXs, the one thing that's kind of unusual about the VIXs is the premium has not been that spectacular in the last few days, sort of, you know, during these rallies. And, you know, it's, I mean, it's, look, the kind of market we're in, we, honest to God, we could bottom here maybe at 6,715 or 6,700. If we hold 6,700, that's important. It's a sort of a double bottom, or if we hold just above it, I'm not sure we're going to, but because it, it looks pretty bad right now. But the... If we do, and the VIXs come back down again, and we go out swinging this afternoon, and maybe the news is, is good on the earnings, then, uh, you know, if we were to go up overnight, I think you could breathe a sigh of relief and you could say the bottom, the bottom may be in on this market. But as of now, the VIXs are starting to get their mojo again to the upside, which is troubling because Look, if you look at the daily on the VIXs right now, you could say the top, the highs are in on the VIXs and the lows may be in on the market. But that could change, you know, because if this negative formation in the VIXs gets taken out to the upside, for, I mean, you, uh, this correction is by no means over and we might have a lot more downside to go. So it's, uh, I mean, yeah, I think yesterday, to me, yesterday was a pretty easy day to call. Today's a kind of a harder day to call, to be honest with you, because um, if we do turn here, you know, that changes everything. But right now it, it's looking, it's starting to look kind of grim again. You know, it, it, we haven't, this retest this morning didn't do the job. Uh, so we, we have potentially to come back down and maybe test it. And then, then we could rally. Then we could have a more meaningful rally. But you know, there are some good things happening. Another, another in, encouraging thing is, and this is quite important, uh, is that the the Russell, uh, I mean, the Russell and the mid cap have been acting a lot better today. Now, you know, they've been kind of acting as at a premium to the rest of the market Cons since they led the way down. It's kind of like Tesla too, you know, Tesla led the way down on this correction and it sort of led the way up until, you know, half an hour ago. Uh, so, you know, the, these these are all sort of interesting nuances that are going on in the market that are giving possibly a clue to, uh, you know, a possible upturn. But what happens is you get these, you know, we, I mean, look, what was good about yesterday was we got a late rally you know, here, here, uh, look, I'd probably take a shot at covering and reversing here because we just hit the 67 on the NASDAQ. That might be a support point. Yeah, and, uh, specifically to the NASDAQ? I, I, I always read read off the NASDAQ uh, because it's really the leader. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, yeah. secondarily to the S&P. I take my cue um, from the S&P. That's, that's how I know people look at the same markets and yeah. you get your guidance. You, you get what works for you. That's why when people want to learn to trade, they, they spend too much time thinking about how I can become this guy or how I can walk like this guy and talk like this guy and think like this guy. You know, get enough 
fundamental information so that you can walk and talk and think like yourself. You know, find your place in the market. That's what you did, right? You found sure. your place. You you found that place where, you know, you're you're the keeper of the temple of knowledge uh, for your life and for your accounts and for your trading and clients or whatever it may be. That's your place. Well, I, I watch them. I mean, I watch them all. I, I watch all five indices, which yeah. is why I watch a hundred different markets every day. Because you watch way if you know, most people can. If, if you're not watching a hundred markets, you're not getting the memo. You don't well, because you. I, I, don't, every, I don't get that. Every, every market has every market has input, you know, and you know you might look at the lumber market. You know, we nailed the highs on this thing, you know, a, a quarter of a year ago, maybe, and uh, look what's happened since. We've been cut in half on lumber. I mean, we got to six hundred and fifty or somewhere, and uh, and we're at three hundred and four today. I mean, it's it's amazing. Um, uh, how the give, me, give me a lumber symbol again. Uh, LB, LBX. Let's see what I got here. LB. Uh, SX8. Or is, are we in? I guess uh, there is yeah, no yeah. Z. There is no Z. Okay. Oh, here we go. Random length lumber. Short's not responding. Hang on one second, and I'll have it up. Okay. Yeah, this might actually be a drain. We're getting some pretty good. Yeah, I got it. Get unseats. What was that spike today? Was that uh, uh, around a thirty minutes? That was probably, oh yeah, there was a bit of a spike. It just popped up to four, to, it almost went limit up <coughs> and then uh, came crashing down again. So that probably means we're gonna break 300, you know? So this, this market opens um, at 10 a.m. Eastern? Uh-huh. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. So this is a 30 minute chart folks so we've got in today's session we've got one two three four five six seven candles so far that's that's what we have on the 30 minute chart if we drop it down and go to a range chart you'll see more information when you see moves like that they tend not to be very tradable not from the smaller time frame perspective so what do you think's happening you know uh you and i didn't have a chance to talk about it but i did talk about it last week with uh with Dr. Tom, the housing numbers that came in last week were very disappointing. Some even say that the big sell-off last week was prompted by uh, the case Schiller and the new, what was it, new housing starts? Is that the number that came off? It was really off last week. Way off. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Yeah. It came out uh, the day that the sell-off started. It was about an hour to two hours after that report came out that things started to unwind. So, so lumber, back to your comments about lumber today. Where do you think it's headed? Well, it, it's, it's, you know, look, at, if it breaks down from here, if it goes back to red candles, it probably means we're going to dip down below 300. So... And that would speak to now here, here's what happened guys back before the big real estate crash in 2007 2008 whenever that was um, <clears throat> lumber was selling for less than what it cost to produce lumber with any commodity there's an expense involved in creating and producing you got to pump oil out of the ground. You got to dig gold out of the ground. You got to grow soybeans and lumber. Well, you, you got to chop down trees and send them to the mill. So when lumber starts selling for less than what it costs to produce lumber, then that means there's a whole lot of lumber sitting around somewhere that hasn't been sold. 
heavy inventory. Now they don't, the way they give us inventory numbers on crude, is there any reciprocal uh, statistics or, or number, John, that tells us how much lumber's sitting out there, not being used? The tree's been cut down, it's gone to the mill, it's in perfect two by fours and everything else they need to build houses and the trusses and all this stuff. Do we have any way of knowing how much inventory is sitting on the shelf when it comes to lumber? John? 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 Yeah, we lost our connection. Okay. So, we'll fix that. Okay. There we go. Now, how long has this been going on? Since May. Have we talked about it a little bit over the summer? A little bit. A lag and a retrace. Lag and a retrace. A lag and a retrace. You know what's coming next. Yeah. And there it is. Bearish cross. Lag and a retrace. Do we get a bullish cross? Nope. Almost. And that thing rolls over. And this rolls over. Over below the 50 the whole time. Except for this little rally here. Now it's blue and climbing, but it's blue and climbing, but it's where's it? It's running right into what? The BBC price always reverts to the mean. What's this call? That's a head fake. It actually got above, looked like it was going to run, pulled back to go, but it didn't go. Never got a green candle there. A leg and a retrace, and a leg and a retrace, and a leg and a retrace, and a leg. And so, well, golly gee, do you just stay short? If you are if you got short here, do you stay short here? Well, until there's a reason not to be short could be an exit signal, could be any number of things. All right, on the S&P, again, just to recap, five and a quarter points available on the upside. The alerts did not go out until 9 a.m. this morning. That would be this red candle right here. This was the 9.30 opening candle. Okay, five and a quarter, three and three quarter, important prices, important areas, almost always tested. And before the open, trigger good for six points that's three hundred dollars per contract on the s p don't get out of the swing higher swing low it's not possible except by accident bottom line is wherever you place your stop the market's going to make points available and where you place your stop is how much you're willing to accept and or settle for back to the discussion at the beginning of the show about decisions. The decision making will always be a part of the process and ultimately it will fall to you. Some people relegate it to a black box or flip of the coin. Hmm. Yeah, there's nobody selling that coin flipping thing on TV and there's nobody selling that black box on TV. Now think about it, the first time somebody ever puts a commercial on TV to sell a black box, a true black box. There's some hybrid things, but they're not things, they're people. There's always a name attached to it. It may be a pure computer algorithm, but they still put faces on them. All right, I'm Bob J and I retired six years ago and I make $9,000 every day in my boxer shorts before breakfast. So can you. Yeah, it's time to change the channel. I'd rather watch the Cartoon Network than that stuff. The Dow, no trigger. Not long, not short. In a sideways shuffle. On the Russell. 9 o'clock candle, 9.30 candle. 2.3 points at $50 per point. 7.8 points at $50 per point because important prices in important areas are almost always tested. Crude oil, good for a stop out. In Q, no trigger. Gold, no trigger. 
Soybeans just triggered at 8.33. And lumber just lumbers along. In your mind's eye, think about what it will look like when lumber turns around. Why? I don't trade lumber. Okay, fair enough. But all markets move the same. <gasps> no, they don't. They have distinct personalities. Some like long walks on the beach. Others prefer a movie on a rainy day. Mm. Personalities aside. Leg, retrace, leg. So you can't put in another leg. Okay, we'll go the other way. Path of least resistance. Leg, retrace. Leg, retrace. Leg, retrace. Leg. Deeper retracement. Lower high. Lower low. Bam. Wall Street. This is the 30-minute candle that I force myself to step away from the platform. Right here. Every day, every market. Why? Because, yes, we want volatility, we want liquidity, and we want volatility. Those are a trader's best friends. However, during that initial 30 minutes, for me, and this is a personal preference, because Michael comes in on the Fortec range, and he hits the ground running every single day. Boom, boom, boom. Some days he may have three, four trades in that first 30-minute candle. I don't only because I'm forcing myself to walk away because the opportunities look incredible. So you put your foot in them and then it whipsaws back the other way. I just, I let it calm down. I let the market find some kind of direction. But see, some days it doesn't find. Yesterday, did we find direction? We did. And when did it become evident? At the tipping point. Where was that? 26.55. Oh, that's easy to see on a historical chart. No, it's pretty easy to see on a <laughs> on a live chart too. Think it through, play the tape all the way to the end, and you'll go, oh, yeah, true that. Okay. <clears throat> Geese. What are they good for? An awful lot we've learned. Have we not? It's good for the goose, good for the gander. Let's just see. Did we finish up yesterday? Let's see. Might have one more day. So today, you know, the market has a lot of ups and downs. So does life. They run parallel. You may have noticed that life and the market seem, or life and your trading, run parallel. Ecclesiastes 311. As you approach the roller coaster ride of life, part one, Ecclesiastes 311 teaches us that he has made everything appropriate in its time. One preacher said, friends, if I were God, your body would always be 18. You could eat anything and maintain perfect weight. Your middle-aged wife would have the face and figure of an angel. Your midlife husband, thick hair and washboard abs. Your youngsters as intellectual as Einstein. Your teens cooperative, logical, and consistent. Temperatures would be 24 degrees centigrade, always. Snow would be warm, melting overnight, and there'd be no nasty people. Hmm. But the preacher says, I'm not God. So, we age, gain, struggle, shiver, sweat, and put up with difficult people. That is the roller coaster ride of life. It's not God punishing you, nor is it proof that you're fatally flawed. It's not 
heaven or hell selecting you for special persecution, nor is it evidence that you maybe aren't really saved after all. No, it's just life in the real world. John 16, 33. Jesus said on earth, you'll have many trials. He just came right out and said it. On earth, you will have many trials. As in the physical universe, there's an underlying law of wave mechanics. No, not Elliott wave, but some might align these. In accord with it, our energy, emotions, and creativity ebb and flow consistently. What, did I just say leg? Retrace? Leg? No, I said ebb and flow consistently. Put any label you want on it. It's how the world works, not just the markets. Sometimes we're on top of the mountain, and other times the mountain's on top of us. But whether we're at the peak or the trough, there's a time to weep. That's a trough. Time to laugh, that would be a peak. A time to mourn trough, time to dance peak. You can read more in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 4. While it's more fun to laugh than weep, he has made everything appropriate in its time. Relax. God, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, he and he alone determines the seasons of your life. He determines if you get to put in another leg or not. Now, whatever season you're in at this moment in time, the word for you today is this. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for you. We either believe him or we don't. We believe that the season we're in, whether it's on a mountaintop or in a trough, we're here because this is where he wants us to be right now. We're either celebrating a victory or mining an opportunity. Or we throw our hands up right before we give up. It's not a season to give up. This is a season to stand tall, to embrace everything God has surrounded you with. Whether it's in trading, whether it's in life. Show up. Participate in your life because it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment let's make the most of this life this incredible life that god has given us whether we're in a trough right now or on a mountaintop right now because if we're on the mountaintop we better understand that there's a trough in our future and if we're in a trough right now, we need to understand that there's a mountaintop in our future. It's how it works. And the last leg down, I guess, is when they slam the lid on the casket and lower you into the ground. Somber thought, so don't think about that. Think about the day ahead. Don't think about yourself. Think about someone else for a moment across the street, maybe a neighbor, maybe a coworker. You got a coworker. Sometimes you hear her or him softly sobbing in their cubicle. And when anybody goes, uh, "Hey, how you doing?" Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, everything's fine. Yeah. Obviously, it's not. I mean, we all get a little sad occasionally, but he or she—they're sobbing silently in their cubicle on every day that ends in Y. 
maybe you should go over there and talk to them. Maybe you should let them know that someone at least knows there's a problem. And that they always have someone they can talk to. Which reaches back to, have we shown that person, has that person seen, exhibited in our behavior, a person that can be trusted with that secret? Whatever that secret is, whatever that thing is, it's so deep, it's so dark, that a person sobs on a daily basis, while everyone else is just busy, 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 just hurrying by, everything okay? Okay. We, we ask that sometimes out of reflex. Yeah, how you doing? And then when a person starts to tell us how they're doing, we're like, oh my God, I didn't, actually, I didn't mean it literally. I just like, you know, but I had to learn to say hello. I stop people asking people how they're doing. They might tell me. Hmm. All right, guys, it's been a great show. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you need help, uh, I'll be on the Telegram, Logic 247, Passport, Concierge Trade Alerts, My Forte, come on down. Uh, mentoring sessions this afternoon. Whatever you need, we're here. You can reach Michael 949 423 6464. That's 949 42 E I'll be on Telegram at CFRN1. That is the number one. I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with His mercy and His grace. I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.